Hey class, um, I thought I would go ahead and make you guys an uh, additional problem solving video where I just kind of go through a more complicated type problem to give you an example of how to approach these two dimensional projectile motion type problems. Because I think they're tricky for people, especially when dealing with different angles and so on. So anyway, we have a situation here, and this is uh, data that's based on, on real facts about the eruption of Mount Fuji. Um, so what we're told is that solid rocks, chunks of basically uh, volcanic material that they call volcanic bombs, which just sounds cool, um, were launched out of Mount Fuji at the time of the eruption. And they have been measured to have landed a distance, a horizontal distance labeled D down here, away from the eruption site of 9.4 kilometers. And that resulted it in it being a distance h below the eruption site of 3.50 kilometers. And so from this, I want you to determine two things. A asks you to determine what is the initial speed at which the rock or volcanic bomb must have exited the volcano, as well as what is the total hang time or flight time of that projectile. So those are the two things that we're asked to determine. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So when we try to solve these problems, you want to always start with having a picture. As you see here, we do have. You probably want to have axes of some sort. So I'll go ahead and add some axes in here. We can maybe we'll label it like this. So if we call this the x-axis and this the y-axis, there we go. We have axes now. And so if we want to go ahead and label our different variables, once we have our picture and our axes, we can do so. So let's start with the x direction. So our initial x position, based on the way we drew these axes, would be zero. Our final x position is the distance d away that it landed, right? So that's d, or if we want to label that more specifically, that's 9,400 meters. It's 9.4 kilometers, so I just did a quick mental uh, unit conversion there. Now our initial velocity we don't know, so some of you might be inclined to put a question mark here for the initial velocity, but that can actually be problematic because you'll end up with too many unknowns to solve. But what you can do instead is you can say, while I don't know this initial velocity, I am told it takes off at an angle of 35 degrees. So that means the x component of the initial velocity here we can express in terms of that angle. So this would be the overall initial velocity, and since it's the adjacent side, again, maybe we'll make a little triangle here. If I turn this into a little triangle, right? Since it's the adjacent side, then it will be V initial multiplied by the cosine of that 35 degree angle. This is nice now because when we get to the Y direction, it's gonna be V initial sine 35. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that now since we're thinking about it. So this is going to be V initial sine 35 degrees. And so with that, what that means is now instead of having two different unknowns, V initial X and V initial Y, we only have one unknown. Bonus. All right, final velocity in the X. Well, since it's X and we're doing projectile motion, it's just going to be equal to the same as our initial velocity. And our acceleration in the X is going to be zero meters per second squared, and we don't know the time either. Now let's do the same in the y direction. So our initial y position is gonna be equal to h, which is 3,500 meters. Our final position, it hits the ground, is zero. Our final y velocity, we do not know. We could solve if we wanted to, but we don't know it. And our acceleration is gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or if we want, we can just call it negative g. Cool, so now we've labeled all of our variables, we wanna to try to start solving. So we first are asked to figure out the initial velocity. You can choose to look at x or y. A lot of times x is easier because that acceleration is zero, so I'm gonna just jump in. Let's try using the x direction. The only equation of motion in x that tends to be useful here is the second equation of motion, which says x final equals x initial plus v initial x times time plus one half acceleration in the x times time squared. Ax is zero, so that's zero. 
And so what we get, um, let's see, x initial is also zero. So what we get is our final position, which is d, is just equal to our initial velocity, v initial. Ooh, I almost said sine, boy, howdy. That would have been a mistake. Cosine, right? Erase that real quick. Times the cosine of the angle theta. That's our initial velocity. And all that multiplied by time. Oh, but wait a second. We don't know v initial, and we don't know time. One equation, two unknowns. Bummer, can't solve. So we then would need to look at the y direction instead. So for the y direction, since I know information about my position, I'm going to actually choose to use the same equation. So I got, let's see, y final equals y initial plus v initial y times time plus one half acceleration in the y times time squared. So let's plug in what we know. y final is zero. y initial is labeled as h. You could plug in the number, but I like doing things in variable form first and then solving afterwards. So plus v initial in the y is v initial sine theta multiplied by time plus one half a. A is just negative g, so I have negative one half g t squared. And now we're stuck in a bit of a pickle. We have another equation now with again v and t as our unknowns. But I remember back to algebra, the good old days, you know, I have two equations with two unknowns. So I should be able to use algebra to solve. So I'm gonna solve one of these two equations for t and solve it back into the other equation to solve for velocity. So the algebra is gonna get a bit ugly here, but we should be able to go through the algebra step by step and solve for both of those two unknowns. To start, I'm gonna divide my x equation, both sides by v initial cosine theta to get t by itself, so those cancel. So I get t is equal to the distance d over v initial cosine theta. Now I can plug this in to my other equation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's see what we get. So we have 0 equals h plus v initial sine theta times t, which is that whole thing. Uh, let's see, d over v initial cosine theta and then minus one-half g t squared, which again is d over v initial cosine theta. And that, again, t squared. Don't forget you're squared. See a lot of people with the bad case of the missing squares. So now we have one equation where the un only unknown is v initial. How can we solve for it? Well, let's do some algebra. We look here. V initial on top and bottom, boom, those cancel out. Sine divided by cosine, that's tangent. Oh boy, howdy, this is getting easier. So I have zero equals h plus, still have my d, don't forget that, d times the tangent of theta. All right, nice, none of this has v initial, so this is getting kind of easy here. Then I have minus one half g, and I'm gonna distribute my squared. So I have d squared divided by v initial squared and cosine squared theta. All right, maybe just a quick side note on this cosine squared theta here. I'm gonna pop over here. Just so you know, when you see this, cosine squared theta, for those of you that don't remember from algebra, that's the same as saying the cosine of the angle theta, that whole thing squared, okay? It's just a shorthand way of writing that. Fun side note for you there. Okay, so now we just continue with our algebra. We wanna get v initial by itself, so I'm gonna move my entire one half g d squared over v initial squared cosine squared to the opposite side. So I get one half, uh, let's see, I'm gonna actually write this a little differently. I'm gonna put the g on top and the two on the bottom. So instead of one half, I'm just gonna have d, g d squared over two v initial squared cosine squared theta. And that equals h plus d tan theta. So from there, now I want to get, again, v by itself, so I can multiply it by to the opposite side. So now, oh, sorry about that. got a zoom problem with the palm of my hand there. So g d squared stays here. 2 cosine squared stays. And now, and now I multiply both sides by v initial squared. So I have v initial squared multiplied by h plus d tangent of the angle theta. Oh man, this is getting crazy here. 
Now, to get the V initial by itself, I divide both sides by this term, H plus D tangent theta. Now I got this big old guy over here, G D squared divided by, I still have the two cosine squared theta on the bottom, and all of that is multiplied by this term, which I'm dividing both sides, H plus D tangent of the angle theta. Oh boy, howdy, that's a big one. Now that equals V initial squared. Now if I wanna get rid of that squared, I just take the square root of both sides, right? So I'll take the square root, boom, there we go. Square root there, square root here. And now I get an expression for V initial by itself. And in fact, you could rewrite this out, but for the sake of space, I'm just gonna erase that and know that the square root of V initial squared in this application is just equal to, oh boy, howdy, what happened there? Let me fix that. My pen got thrown off there, is just equal to V initial. So from here, you can just plug and chug. You know G, you know D, you know theta, you know H. Every single term in this expression you know. So if you plug and chug, I'm not gonna write out the numbers, but I trust your abilities on the calculator, you should find that V initial is equal to a whopping 253 meters per second. That, my friends, is most definitely box worthy. In fact, I'm gonna give it Boom, double box, since it's so tricky. Double box. Double box, boom, that's Amy for you. So, pretty exciting, but we're not even done, what? That's only part A, so now we need to figure out the hang time still, the amount of time you have to get out of the way before being hit by this volcanic bomb. So, now that we know V initial though, we can take it and pop it back in to our expression for time that we already discovered. Oh, that's nice. So time is just equal to our distance, which we said was 900, or sorry, 9,400 meters, divided by V initial, which is 253 meters per second, multiplied by the cosine of 35. So if you plug and chug there, you should find that you have approximately 45.3 seconds to get out of the way before being hit by this volcanic bomb. So again, that is box worthy. This is quite a tricky and challenging problem, but I do expect you all to be able to tackle this type of problem with this level of difficulty um, as we go forward in the class and with the exam and so on. So anyway, that wraps things up. Please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have yourselves a box worthy day.